As the sun sets on another day here in Walla Walla, Washington, and it was a pretty nice sunny day for the most part. Anyway, I got this 6,000 pound radial drill. I got part of it covered up here. I got it uh, coated with oil. It has to sit outside. But I keep it from rusting by uh, burning a light bulb in there. Uh, Here's a, I'd probably be better off with a 100 watt bulb, but I'm using a 60 watt bulb. Then cover it with two, two more tarps. And um, anyway, I got the cheap uh, import roller skates under it. And uh, they actually work quite a bit better if you can take up the end play on the rollers. But the axles don't fit through them real good. And I think uh, that would be an improvement to uh, you know, make axles for them. But they're working okay. The 6,000 pounds. This is 6,000 pound pallet jack. And uh, I can move this thing. But the, the concrete's so bad out here. It's just... Uh, kind of homemade job I'm sure my grandfather did probably back in the early 50s and uh, but anyway I got to rotate this thing around move it towards the building and pull this truck back and rearrange this stuff it, not a lot of fun but it's got to be done hey okay let's head inside or I'll meet you in there and uh, we'll take a look what's happening inside well, you know, being a millwright, you can't lie your way out of everything. You know, like a politician does. <laughs> okay, inside the shop here, it's nothing but the truth. The whole truth. <laughs> and sometimes things take time. So, at any rate, I've got that hat, the taper pin removed. And then this... Uh, you have to knock this out from underneath here. I actually used a pry bar. So the uh, taper pin not only held the handle, which is down there in that orange thing, but it also holds the shaft. So if you knock the shaft back, I don't know if I've got a lead hammer handy. Probably not, but uh, well, at any rate, Hey, there is a plastic hammer somewhere here. Never find things when you quite need them. <laughs> I tell you what, this has been quite a project. Um, oh, here's one right at my feet. I'm gonna knock that back. I, like to, I, I should work it back and forth a few times because uh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. And get a little more oil on that. Yeah. Then I'll take and knock it back. <laughs> this hammer's kind of getting tired. Make sure that the yep the uh, line is up. I think I need a bigger lead hammer. But it should move easier than that. See, it's still stuck from being corroded. I'm gonna have to work that back and forth a few times. Maybe even put a little more heat on it. Now, <laughs> now you can get the taper pit in. So anyway, the handle had to come off. The sleeve here actuates the dial, the count dial, and has nothing to do with the uh, the gearbox. This is with the rotating handle shifts it to uh, eight, one of 18 speeds. And uh, then you lock it here with that pin on the handle and it registers here so it's at four and a half inches per minute so to get the gearbox out you have to uh, disengage the shaft that uh, works it and that's how that's done is knock that out one inch they say which is about as far as it goes 
So th that, that, if this uh, is completely froze up, this whole face part would have to come off. And that requires one more of those taper pins in the uh, rapid travers. So it's kind of a complicated uh, situation with these as far as uh, the gearing and everything that has to happen. Like um, when you engage a feed or this uh, rapid travers, the uh, Uh, clutch pushes out and you can't you can't push it back in until uh, it's uh, out of feed I think it does the same with the rapid handle I can't remember it <laughs> well it generally wouldn't but you have to be aware of uh, 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 of this being a hazard if it does not disconnect because that's a three-quarter horse uh, feed motor back there so now that I got this and I can drive that uh, inner shaft out and disengage it from the gearbox the next thing is to remove the motor and uh, I'll get on it Well, in the 1940s, uh, this was top technology. And the machine cost as much as a two-bedroom house in this town in, in, in the 1940s. And comparatively, now you can get a horizontal mill made in China for about 30, 35,000, I believe. But uh, yeah, it's... Uh, you just gotta love the levers and stuff on these. <laughs> well, this one's got a solenoid here that uh, actuates the feed. And uh, it's got the uh, rapid traverse and all of this power via this uh, three quarter horse motor and next thing I'm doing is I'm pulling the motor off here and for uh, interest of old machine tools most of the fasteners on this uh, milling machine are <laughs> slotted screws and you can see them they're everywhere little little ones here and uh, got some big hex bolts on those plates but uh, slotted screws almost everywhere um, on this and the reason is brown and sharp <laughs> made of automatic screw machines <laughs> so that that kind of explains that but uh, some of these were pretty darn tight and uh, I uh, I've got them all loose I took uh, oh these are some of those uh, half inch drive uh, screwdriver type things you get uh, oh I don't know ten bucks for three of them I think at Harbor Freight and I took a hollow ground that I don't know if you can see on that little Bever uh, bell grinder which is really really handy and I managed to break all those loose without uh, um, deforming the heads at all yeah, pretty nice. Okay, so that's how I got that out without screwing those, <laughs> screw, messing those uh, up. But uh, when I've had to take these screws loose on this thing, I, I would take and hollow grind uh, a screwdriver, and that means you uh, back it off. So the tip's just a little thicker at the very tip, and it gets in there and it grabs the bottom of the screw. It really works. Okay, so I'm going to pull that motor off, and um, once that's off and that rod slid out, um, this whole gearbox drops out the bottom. Okay. We'll be back for that.
Well, all right, I've made progress here. A little bit slow, but very thorough. And <laughs> this machine is out of the Manhattan Project at Hanford out here, where they made plutonium for the first atomic bombs. And it's a veteran of the Cold War. And it's in excellent shape. I don't know if you can see down there uh, the light reflecting. Let's see. You can see all the scraping still there. Now this is wartime scraping here. And I, I think it's really nice. I, I like the look of that scraping. But we'll go over here. And you can see more. M-O-O-R-E scraping. This is the best scraping in the world here. There's no doubt about it. The more, the more company. Well, anyway, this uh, machine, it, it's tight. You can get the table all the way to uh, either end and it doesn't get tight. It, it's just uh, not new, but uh, in very, very good shape. And uh, places where pitting gets severe, I'll show you, just for interest, is like in this area right here. Now, what happened, there's actually some deep pitting in there, you can see. What happened is that filled up, it sat outside probably four years, and that filled up with dirt and leaves and stuff like that. And, uh, of course, got wet and stayed wet. Then <clears throat> the acid from all that stuff um, etched that. But you can see the pathway of the uh, knee itself is uh, it's in excellent condition. Now, using the brass brush, and you want a, a variety of brass brushes. This is like a really good brass brush. I got a cleaning supply place for 30 bucks and um, and you got to watch out Harbor Freight some of their uh, <laughs> press brushes are uh, plated of course so to to get the worst of the rust off like that uh, McIlvaney lathe in the last video out there in the junkyard first you do you get it wet uh, with oil or whatever, and then you take uh, the old woodworking guys um, used uh, razor blades to get the stuff off their table saws and stuff like that. And uh, I, I just use kind of a plain scraper with a carbide and keep it sharp, and you can skim that rust off without scratching the metal. And then you take your brass brush. And you get a pan and you put some of uh, uh, the cheapest automotive transmission fluid you can find, the red stuff, and some acetone. And it doesn't really mix. Acetone kind of looks like bubbles floating around in it. But you, you get your brush in that and just kind of move it around. You get both on the brush and then you start scrubbing um, what's left of the rust and uh, it leaves the scraping. If you, if you try to use any kind of power tool, you're going to lose that. That, that, that stuff there's less than, uh, I don't know, what is it, 25 million thick at, at, at most. So you, you can just uh, remove that very quickly. Well, anyway, this is where I'm at. I have to get the gearbox out. I think everything's perfectly functional, but the seal's bad, and it, and it leaks like uh, a pint of oil a month or something. It's very irritating. You can see it just fills up the base. So I gotta drop the, uh, it's called the gear case. Let's get a light over here. And that's it in there. And everything looks good from here. The motor's got a gear on the end of it that uh, runs that in there. And this is a solenoid box here. This is part of uh, kicking the drive in and, in and out. 
so that that's an electrical thing that's uh, going to be dealt with too. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the knee down here and uh, get that uh, gear case out. I think I don't think I want to take the last screws out and try to hold it. I think it's quite heavy. So I'll drop the knee down, get the last screws out, then lift the knee up. And okay, I got everything uh, according to the manual uh, done that needs to be done for this. Okay, be back. Okay, now to get the gearbox out of the knee of a motorized uh, brown and sharp knee that they used on many models, there's the knee. This is what you have to do. You have to remove the drive motor. It's right there. And uh, get that pin out in my uh, video on the difficult to remove <laughs> pin, which was this one. Heat and everything, but it required a bunch of heat anyway because this is a two piece steel that was retained by the one taper pin. This inner shaft here is driven out and disengaged from the gearbox now and it has to be to remove it. The outer sleeve rotates uh, the count dial there and that's all up front here. So it's the inner shaft that goes all the way back to the gearbox. So you got to take the motor off, make sure that's all the way out, take all the screws and then the gearbox, uh, bring the knee down, set down a couple of boards, and uh, the gearbox just drops out. Here's where that uh, selector went through right there. So there's uh, the shift in there. You can see it, uh, gears move. Now it looks to me like if I slide these covers up, I can uh, get get it past here, swing this around, and uh, be able to get this up on a lift table and thoroughly clean it. And it's got a lot of sludge, so <laughs> we'll get, get that all cleaned up. And it's all Timken bearing, all the shafts in it. Let's see if we can get around and see the back side. Anyway, I'll get this out and get it up and clean it real well. A lot of gears here, 18 speeds. Eccentric on the end here works this lever that works the oil pumps here. So I gotta get all of this stuff just uh, cleaned up and uh, ready to go. So I think I'll call this a successful video on how to remove the uh, gearbox out of a brown and sharp knee. Okay, thanks for tuning in.